Hi, uh, my name is David Johansson. I'm one of the co-owners of Blossom Hill Crafts Pottery School. Uh, this video is our April Pottery Challenge. Uh, last week we had a pottery challenge that was thrown, altered, and assembled. Um, this month it's uh, textured, uh, textured vessels, thrown and textured. So you could see some examples here. Um, this is a small thrown and textured vessel. I'm throwing off the mound here today, but there's no reason you couldn't use these same techniques for much bigger pots that aren't thrown off the mound. Um, here's a, a small bowl that I made. Um, another kind of an example here of a textured vessel. So I'm going to start off and show you how I made this one. And again, I'm throwing off the mound. I'm using our Studio Reclaim here. Uh, we call it our floor mix. Sometimes it has little bits of stuff in it. So um, I've already started this pot. Uh, I've, I've thrown the basic vessel and I've got this, uh, this pointed stick tool here that I'm using to make these vertical lines in the pot. The end of a paintbrush works great too. Um, just don't use like a needle tool. It's too fine of a point. So I'm just taking the tool and scribing a line straight up and down in it. Just like going like that. I've thrown the walls of this vessel pretty thick. They're a little over a quarter of an inch. That way I can make a crease in it and still shape the vessel. As I shape the vessel, the shape of the line is going to change and it's going to open it up, which is just a really kind of a nice thing to do. Now as I go to shape this small form on the mound here, I have to shape it from the inside. So I'm just going to put one hand on the inside and just begin to shape it. With a larger form, I would definitely use a rib on the inside, but with a small form like this, it's really just hard to get a rib in there. So you can see, I'm just giving it a little bit of a shape. And let's kind of stop there and see where we are. Okay, you can kind of see what's happened. Now, I like to make the top of my pot smooth to sort of create a transition. So I'm going to just kind of um, uh, take here and just push the top of this pot in a little bit and I'm not going to go too far because we're on a video here and I just don't want to spend all of your day here but if I kind of took my time a little bit I could push that pretty far in and uh, you know make that top fairly narrow if I wanted to. Now I, I actually like to make the definition between the texture and the smooth part of the pot very clean and very clear. So I'm going to again take this stick tool and I'm going to just draw a little line right here. Right where the texture meets the smooth surface to just make a transition clear. I like pottery that has a, a nice transition. So again, uh, this little vessel is thrown off the mound so I have to get it off the mound. Where am I going to cut it off? I like to take a needle tool and poke it in where I think I should cut it and then look in the bottom of the pot and wiggle it. If I could see the bottom of the pot wiggling on the inside, then I, I haven't left myself enough clay. That right there is, right there is pretty good. So I'm going to scribe a little line so I know where that is. And now I'm going to come in uh, with my wooden stick tool like you all have in your tool kits and I'm going to just cut down to that line. And again, I'm going to have a smooth transition on the bottom. I'm going to cut down and then just sort of turn the blade like that slowly. Now as I cut into the clay, I can't turn, I can't move faster than the wheel is moving. I have to move nice and slow. So I've created a nice little platform there for my wire to sit on, which is going to make it real easy for me to cut it nice and straight right off. Just like that. Whenever I pick something up off the mound, I don't pick straight up, otherwise suction could be a problem. I'm going to just tip the pot, pick it up, bring the pot down here, and tip it onto a board, just like that. So I've now got my mound here, and I'm going to take a moment and throw another vessel. So um, recenter up the clay quickly here. Center it up high. Whenever I throw off the mound, I make this thing I call the doorknob. Many of you have heard me talk about that. I just kind of gather in this clay that I'm going to use. I'm going to drill a little hole. And I always measure with my knuckles. I'm going to make a two-knuckle hole. 
and I'm going to open it up just a little bit and compress the bottom. Always compress the bottom when you're throwing off the mound. And now I'm going to lift the walls up just like I would on any pot. And remembering that I want to leave this thick. So I'm going to call that good enough because I'm throwing a thick wall pot. I'm going to compress the rim and make it nice. Now I want to make the general, I'm going to kind of make a little bit of a rounded pot here. So I'm just going to very slightly get my pot going in the direction that I want it to go so I don't have to fight with it when I'm texturing it. And now I'm going to take my metal rib. Watch these things, they can get awfully sharp. Um, and I'm going to just smooth out the surface of my little cylinder here. And there we go. So now um, I'm going to use a cheese cutter. Just a regular cheese cutter. The little thing where the cheese goes has been broken out of this one. Um, you can get these at the dollar store or you can buy one made just for clay at Clay Planet or we can have some here at the studio for you too. So um, I'm going to just take this and I'm going to cut through the clay here, the wall of the clay, and down to the bottom and then pull that peel off like that. And I'm going to do this one as semi-symmetrical. I'm going to go over to the other side and I'm going to come down and pull it off. I'm now going to make a rotation and cut again. So I'm just sort of uh, cutting this thing um, off around in corners here. And I'm going to cut one more time down here and I'm going to go one more time, turning it one more rotation and cut down. One more rotation and cut down. One more rotation and cut down. And again. So now I've kind of given this thing a texture all the way around using a cheese cutter. Now you can also just use your wire. You could hold your wire tight and just cut down the exact same way works great. So now I'm going to again put my hand on the inside, texturing, on, touching the pot only from the inside. And again you can see why I wanted to leave the walls fairly thick so that I don't make a hole in the pot while I'm doing this. And I'm just going to shape it. And there we go. You could begin to see how the pot just kind of began to have a very nice texture. I don't consider myself the texture king at all. Uh, I like textured pottery. Uh, this isn't actually something I do a lot. If you really find this fascinating, you should come into our Thursday night class and see Matt Hoagland um, do the work. Hoagland, she, he also owns Clay Planet. Uh, his textured pottery is just phenomenal and his wife uses stamps to create textured wheel thrown pottery. Just gorgeous. Um, so what I'm going to do now is actually kind of bring the clay from the top down. I'm just kind of bringing it down. I kind of like that look a little bit. Just to kind of finish that top off. Sometimes you could just go in a little bit there too. And as you go in, the top of that texture, you can kind of see the pattern just by pushing in like that. It's kind of neat. I'll, uh, when I take this one off, I'll turn it. So again, I need to know where the bottom is, so I'm going to make a little judgment call, give it a wiggle. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take my stick tool, draw a line so I know where I put that, that in there. And I'm now going to get the wheel spinning and cut down with my stick tool, remembering that I can't move faster than the wheel moves. When I'm to my depth, I'm going to rotate it just a little bit, rotate it like that, just a little bit and voila I now have my pot ready to come off the mound drop my wire on there pull through and I never pick straight up I tip like that now I'm hoping that on the camera you could kind of see what I was able to do by pushing in sort of like create that nice textured top you can also pull that down and that looks pretty cool too um, so here's this little pot, and I'm going to do one more for you here real quick. 
just to kind of give you one more idea of what you can do uh, with this this textured here, thrown in textured pots. So I'm going to cone up again. I'm going to make my little doorknob that I like to make. I'm going to drop my hole. I'm going two knuckles, the two knuckle pot. Open it up just a little bit, always compressing the bottom. Always compressing the bottom whenever you throw off the mound. I'm now going to lift my pot up just like I did before, just like you would any other pot. Leaving the walls thick. I'm going to call that good enough. I could take probably one more pull on this one, but I'm not going to. Just in the interest of time. I'm going to give it kind of a little bit of a general shape of where I'm going, but I'm not pushing that shape at all. I'm going to take my metal rib and smooth the surface just like that. Now I'm going to use uh, the cheese cutter with the wiggle wire in it. The wiggle wire, it's like a spring that's been stretched. In fact, you can use a spring that's been stretched. And instead of cutting straight down, I'm going to come in at an angle and then I'm going to come back at an angle. So I'm going to do that again. And I'm not going to rotate around this one. I'm going to come in at an angle and back at an angle. And you know, you could try many variations of this. I'm going to go all the way around the pot. I'm going to come in at an angle and go back at an angle. I'm going to come in at an angle and go back at an angle. Just, I'm going to keep going around the pot. Not trying to do it in quadrants this time. Much more free form. In at an angle, back at an angle. In at an angle back at an angle, in at an angle, back at an angle. So now I've got this kind of funky looking shape and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reach into the inside of the pot and I am going to just start to give it some shape. Reaching in, giving it some shape. There we go. And you can kind of see that sort of becomes fairly interesting. I'm now going to get my finger a little bit wet and I'm going to start to pull this clay just down. And there we go. I've kind of got kind of an interesting sort of shape going on here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check where my bottom is. Give it a wiggle. That looks pretty good. Take my stick tool. Give it a cut. Rotate the tool. Give it a pull. And voila, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is the April Challenge, and I sure hope you have a lot of fun with this. I'll be in every class the third week of April to do a quick demo on this so you could see it again. Thanks a lot. Bye now.